Neighbors but not by birth Family but not by DNA Dave and Adam are two of a kind And they want to borrow some of your day To talk into your ear holes About midi-chlorians and roller coasters Those two things are unrelated But so are they They're unrelated at birth Like most people who aren't related Unrelated at birth but they're brothers in a brotherly way Now it's time for the phenomenal brother And the golden voice of the South The brothers from different mothers But they're both really proud To be unrelated at birth So Adam, you, you know the, the State Farm commercials where they say, Don't mess with my discount! Don't mess with oh, my yeah. discount! Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he talked about it before. But we just got the drive wise, the drive save or drive wise, whatever it's called for State Farm in our cars. And uh, so far, we've had it for about three weeks now. Okay. Um, who do you think is the best driver in this household and in, in my household? Mm, that's a good question. If I had to guess, I would say you. Are you saying that because I brought it up? No, I, I don't know why, but I I have a feeling like like something way down deep that just says that 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 amanda might not be the best okay at driving well, let's put it this way right now my <laughs> discount is at 90 percent. oh wow i have never gotten below a four four out of five star drive i love it and i've had 46 trips at a total of 307 miles i love it I don't know how many trips and miles Amanda has, but I asked her before we started recording. By the way, I love you, honey. Um, <laughs> 73%. Wow. Amanda is at 73%. She has a C. Any, any indication of what the leading cause of that low percentage is? That you can say <laughs> on air? <laughs> Your hesitation what, makes me think I know the answer to that question already. What is the one thing that, that people recommend that we don't do while driving? Um, yell at people. Wave a gun in the air. Speed. What's it? What am I doing in my video? What um, am I showing you? Um, what am I eat. showing you in my, what am um, I showing <laughs> in, in my video, Adam? Um, <laughs> Allow <laughs> people to ride in the back of a truck. Hey, cell phone. Cell phone, phone use. <laughs> <laughs> so phone how, does use. It, how does it calculate this? Is it based off of like if you pick it up, unlock so, it? It basically it's pick it up and unlock well unlock it because I've had I've been counted off for phone use on my street when I have just pulled out of the driveway. And uh I was setting like I listened to our, our daily Bible passage. We have a New Testament, Old Testament Bible passage for my church mm. uh, every morning. And I listen to that on the way in this way into work this morning. I, I didn't get my Bluetooth set up in my car before I left my driveway. Yeah. And it counted off me fiddling with my phone to get that going in my car. Oh, that'll learn you. <laughs> yeah. That'll learn me. Uh, so yes, it, it's, you know, You've you felt the the wrath of don't mess with my discount lately with me. Yeah. Um, now it doesn't take off for watch use. So okay. there have been times when I've been <laughs> frantically writing with my watch, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does take off. Even like even if you're sitting at a red light, it takes off if you pick up your phone. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's you're, tough. You're, yeah. So it's it, and it's this little box that they give you and it, it Bluetooths to your phone. And so it just I don't know how it picks up speed. I don't know anything, hmm. but it it works like so just giving you a a round figure. I'm not going to tell you what our bill is every every six months or anything like that. But one million dollars. We say forty dollars a month with my 90 percent and Amanda's 72 73 percent. So you could save more if you would step it up. 
If Amanda would step up and stop playing on her phone every every time she <laughs> it's that dang candy crush. Honey, I love you. No, she she has a bad problem of, of texting back. Mm. Which I have texted her, don't mess with my discount. There you go. Yeah. By the way. While we're sitting yeah. here, I actually enrolled to get one for my CRV. There you go. While we've been you, got stay, you got State Farm as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah. if you have State Farm, not a sponsor, but if you have State Farm, I would uh, recommend yes. getting the drive DriveWise discount. I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to sponsor any now. Do I'm you know why? why? By the way, but well, before we say why, Golden Voice of the South, <laughs> Human Jukebox, Dave Adams. That's you. Live and in living color. We can't say that anymore. All the way from the top of the state of Alabama. Recorded and in, in stereo. How about that? There you go. You are the yes. one, the only, the dynamic scientist. That's what, that what, that's what, like, that's what Squadcast picked for me this week. You're the one, the only, the phenomenal brother. All the way from the middle of the state of Florida. The house de mouse. The St. Cloud. <laughs> the St. Cloud. Oh, the Saint, Saint <laughs> the Sainty Cloud. Wait, Santa Claus? Hmm? What's Santa this? Claus? What's this? What's this? Anyway. Which, I can, which I can finally sing along with now that I've actually seen that movie last year. Last time. <gasps> I had never this seen is it Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Anyway. The only, the only thing I knew about Nightmare Before Christmas before was that it was most of the content for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party for a good run of that event. <laughs> Yeah, but um, now it's the, the, the boogeyman Sanderson and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I think so I anyway, like. Adam, but anyway. Why do I not want to sponsor anymore? I don't know. This is new what, information for me. What have we launched? Um, a giveaway? Well, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. But what else have we launched? Um, khakis? No, a, uh, a Patreon. <laughs> She sounds hideous. <laughs> well, she's a guy. So. Um, <laughs> yes, a Patreon. We have we have launched a Patreon, and and originally we said we were going to do th- two to three tiers. What what's going on? Two tiers. What's going on with two what? tiers? You, you had this look of disgust. And have a look of disgust. Okay. I'm good. We only have one tier, right? One. Tier. <laughs> one solitary tier. Solitary no, we have tier. we have one tier, just a standard for tier, for five bucks. And like we've said before, if you feel like giving that five dollars a month to put something into the show, and we are going to invest that, grow with it, better equipment, all of the things. We're not going to put it in our pocket or pay for the discount that Amanda doesn't get. None of that. This is purely just going into the show to make it better from all from all aspects. So. If Patreon you will not break, pay for my flight down to Orlando. Exactly. Or, nor your Halloween Horror Nights ticket when you get down here in September. But um, Af- not the normal weekend. Not the normal weekend, yes. But I, I think that, you know, reiterate that. But I think that it's a test to see what we can do with it and show some progress with the support that we do get. And then, like we've, you'll hear later with the giveaway, um, we're doing some stuff with Dalester.com. And, you know, we can refine our merchandise and just really kind of take a look at the whole approach that we're using with everything. So I think this is a really good starting point to see what we can do. And then we'll add something because, you know, we, we toyed around with the second tier, which would have been um, at some point you get a two tiers. You get a shirt at some point, like two or three times a year, you would get one of our exclusive shirts. And a live feed and all that. And live feed and all that. This is going to give us a chance to. You know, we're doing the shorter live feeds. We're doing the podcast um, as, as the only release and not doing the long Facebook lives. So this is going to give us a chance to dial in the content, dial in the merchandise, and then show a whole offering that then a second tier, I think, would be a part of. This is really just, hey, you know, you listen to us every week, um, support us a little bit, and we're going to get out there a little more, get different equipment, get different merchandise, all of that. So we appreciate any support you guys give us, whether it's monetary or simply just moral support. But this Patreon is out there if you are so called to do that. Yeah. And, and and I want you to, I want to be upfront and honest. We don't ask you to do, I mean, we're asking, but we, we're, we don't expect anybody to do this. This is just something, if you want to support what we're doing, it's there. Yeah. We're probably not going to mention it every week. It might be in our, our 
our little blurb about what we do every week. Mm -hmm. But it's not saying we demand you to do it. We will still respond to your comments on the live, whether or not you do Patreon. Right. The, <laughs> we will not shun you if you don't. Shun the unbeliever. Shun. shun. Oh, shun. Charlie. Let's go to Charlie Candy Mountain, Charlie. <laughs> oh, my kidneys. <laughs> okay. So if you haven't watched Candy Mountain, Charlie and Candy Mountain on YouTube, oh, you have to. Man. Oh, Halloween Horror Nights from last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, what I was going to say, too, is I've set a goal of $50 a month. That is 10 Patreons, what I call unrelated at birthers. Hmm. <laughs> birthers. We are going to be, we're calling you birthers. Okay. That, that, we, that, 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 that might be up for debate, but <laughs> okay. It, it works for now. Works for now. Just like the birth line worked for then and it's stuck. Yep. Um, but if we get $50 a month, so that's 10 birthers. If we get 10 birthers a month, then we will possibly go to that second tier. Yeah. Uh, but I think, I think it's, it's part of that is showing success and, and an interest in supporting us that way. I think the other is giving us time to make sure that we have merchandise interesting enough for somebody to want to provide more to be able to get, you know, to be a double birther. A double for the <laughs> twins. <laughs> then we'll have a I twins like, level and a triplets level. <laughs> I like double birther. Double birther. Wow. And that, it, sounds the, like if a, we had, that sounds like a wrestling move. Oh, and he's going with the double birther. If we ever get to be big enough to have three tiers, be the triple birther. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then it, we'd have a fourth one called the big birther. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So what you what do you get if you become a birther? Um, I think we said it last show, and I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. Uh, we will mention your name in a special shout out at least once a month. If and more. right, probably more. You will get a special email from myself oh. and from Mr. Russell Dear from Mr. our per from our personal emails. Oh man, I would sign up for that personally, but Dear Theodosia. <laughs> Dear Bertha, what to say to you? Say to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? We uh, might even send you a voice memo. A what? Now, wait, wait. Now you're just going crazy. What is this? Me singing to you. Uh, that can be a special opt-in. If you want to do it, I will I will send you a voice memo of me singing to so, you. So would the, would the opt-in, speaking of discounts, would the opt-in be for an extra like dollar you'll get a voice memo? Or if you... Agree to sign up for this. We'll take a dollar off every month. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so we've, we've, we've given you two topics we're going to talk about. We'll talk about the special uh, giveaway that we have at the end of the show. Yeah. We're, we're going to bury the lead with that. Sure. That's, Why not? that's the important part. So anyway, so I did something this weekend that is you might not get because you still hadn't seen The Greatest Showman. Hmm. But I just I went this weekend. <laughs> was that a well, pregnant pause to use? No, I, was, I thought I heard a, a big gust of wind outside, but it was actually the bathroom flushing upstairs and the turtles walking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hark. Hark, is that a gust of wind? No, it is the wife using the facilities. <laughs> She's going to hate me listening to this show. <laughs> oh, anyway, you did something amazing, evidently. So I went in town this week was a circus. And, and you know, most circuses, they, they get, you know, rent a big facility. They have three rings. They do it up, right? Now, granted, they can't have animals anymore because apparently that's inhumane. I hate that. Animal good, people bad. Y'all know my thoughts on that anyway. Uh, but there's a circus called Bernardo's Circus. Bernardo. Bernard Bernardo. 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 Bernardo, yeah, used to be one of the ringmasters for Ringland Brothers. Hmm. Well, it folded, and he started his own circus. It's not a, a big overhead type circus. There's five performers and him. Okay. 
Um, and it's under a true big top. I mean, they, they bring their own tent. They set it up. There's just one stage. Okay. And it was a contortionist. It was a clown. It was a sword walker who was also kind of a balanced act. A sword walker? It, he walked on a freaking sword. Hmm. Like okay. it was a sharp sword. You could tell because he had oh yeah inventions on his feet when he, he walked came up. Um, it was this Cuban act who no, they said they were from Cuba. <laughs> no. I, I, why, why are you laughing? No, go ahead. No, continue. There's, there's, there's no need to stop right now. Okay. <clears throat> but it was this Cuban act that, that did all sorts of weird balance stuff while they were on like a, a pendulum or a fulcrum. I guess that's a fulcrum, right? Where it's the, they're standing on a, a board that's on a, a log and they have to balance. Is that a fulcrum or is that, that's a fulcrum. fulcrum. Yeah. Right? yeah you, okay. You're using the proper terminology. Okay. So, and it was like, he, he juggled on this thing. He put a board on his, his assistant, his sister's stomach, put a, a fulcrum on her stomach wow. and then stood on top of it. The, and then there was an aerialist, aerialist. Yeah. She, it was, they did the sheet thing where she climbed the sheets and then basically did a death fall from mm -hmm. the top of the, the, the tent and her muscles had muscles, which had muscles. I bet. I have never seen such a ripped woman. She was five foot nothing. And I was terrified of her, but it was such a cool moment. I, I'm going to show you this picture and I'll probably post this picture on our Instagram page and our Facebook page, but it was such a cool moment because it was such an intimate setting that it was just really cool because at the end, they invite you to take pictures with everybody in the, in the, the circus. Oh, and my, cool. my daughter and my niece got to go up there and take pictures with everybody yeah, in the circus. That's cool. Yeah. It was really cool. And I mean, it, it was probably low budget, mm -hmm. And, but they go around all around the country and put on a, a true old school, big top style circus. That's great. Might be the best time I've ever had at a circus, to be honest with you. Mm, that's great. Yeah. So and we had, we had one come to town. Gosh, it's been several years now, but they, they've come back since and Blair always wants to go and I'm less than enthusiastic um, because it, I think it, it, what got me about this one that we went to was they had the same kind of acts, you know, they had some dudes that did stuff like they had this big contraption that was two like hamster wheels connected on a big rotating arm. Yeah. I've and the that. dudes would walk on the outside of them all the way up at the ceiling of the building. You know, it's the same building where they show livestock at the, at the Osceola County fairs where they set the circus up, you know, and, and I was, I was totally digging it, man. And then they actually had an intermission at the, in the middle, like towards the end where they blew up these bounce houses and let the kids run around and play in bounce houses and stuff. And that was kind of neat. And then this dude, they bring out, they turn the lights off and they bring out the glow carts and the, you too can have this laser sword for only nine 99 plus tax. Right. Uh -huh. And I was, I was like, Oh, here we go. You got the kids all amped up. Now you're going to bring out the merchandise. And I was I was okay with it because Disney does the same thing, right? Until the guy literally oh. said, the dude literally said, the ringmaster gets on his microphone, these laser swords are made from 100% genuine plastic. <laughs> I lie not. You can ask Blair. 100% genuine plastic. Was he being funny? He did not break character. Like, there was no, like, pause or, like, a doo -doo or noise or anything. It was literally part of the spiel. It and I think he realizes that people, but he real. I think they realize people aren't really listening. They just hear hundred percent genuine and they just jump. I don't know, dude. But when he said that, I was like, okay. <laughs> and they, okay. but they, they actually had animals in that one. I was shocked. They did have animals. They need to have animals. I need elephants back. Come well, on. I think, I think the circus is a lost art because you can see, what those people do on YouTube and TV. And it's not like something you can only see when it comes to town anymore, you know? Right. But I right. think they should still do it. But th those little companies that still do it, I think they, they hold a little lost piece of America. Yeah. America, they do. Like, we can't get back, you know? 
And it, it, that's why I say it's, it was very much like The Greatest Showman because it was a a traveling oddities more than a traveling circus. Yeah, exactly. Because it was more what P.T. Barnum had his circus at first. Yeah. So it was it was pretty cool. And I actually, so you know me, and I go down rabbit holes of trying to see how how history is and how how who this person is that came in. Yeah. So Bernardo is Keith Bernardo, I think. Um, I, he is married to a very historic woman in another industry that I am very fond of. Does that mean she's old? No. He is married to the very first master bourbon distiller in the bourbon industry. That is a woman. The very first woman master bourbon distiller. Okay. She's at Woodford Reserve. Okay. Woodford is a very good. So she works at Woodford and just happened to be the first woman that's a master distiller there mm-hmm. or the first one at any of the majors? At or any of the majors. Overall. Okay. At any of them. Wow. Uh, let me let me see if I can find her story. Give me a second. Googling here. Go ahead and, and vamp for me, Adam. Just on the spot, come up with something after you're talking about a lady making bourbon. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, anybody can do anything they want. <laughs> Chase your dreams, kids. <laughs> Marianne Barnes. <laughs> she was made the first Kentucky bourbon's first female master distiller. Growing that's up, right. Jeanette- so Kentucky what, what? bourbon being like a, a regional thing or Kentucky bourbon being like a style? Like what is Kentucky? Is that like only in the state? Kentucky bourbon is the style. So Thank if, you. if yeah, I educate. So if I'm if I'm drinking Jack Daniels, it's not Kentucky bourbon. Jack Daniels is whiskey. Um, but bourbon, if you're talking true bourbon, is c- from Kentucky. Okay. So but it doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. Right. It's all about, well, the Kentucky bourbon has to be made in Kentucky. Okay. So it is the state thing. Yes. Okay. So it, the best, it, it's widely known. The best bourbons come from Kentucky. Widely known. Okay. Yeah, it is. It, okay. I mean, yeah. across the world, it's, it's known that. Everybody's um, learning something right now. Please continue. I know, right? Jack yeah. Daniels is good for what it is. Everybody knows old number seven, but I, I dare you, and, and we'll talk about what I get to do again this weekend, probably at the end. I dare you to to give me a blind, a blind taste test of Jack Daniels next to Jim Bean. And I can tell you which one is Jack, which one is Jim. And I guarantee you, if you gave me Jack Single Barrel, which is their high end, I can tell you what Jack Single Barrel is from, from Blanton's. And I can mm. promise you that Blanton's and Jim Bean would be better than than Jack Daniels. I think I think when we have the podcast on, I think that might be part of the episode, Dave. I think I think you have you have created a challenge for yourself. I love it. Well, Will and Grease will tell you at the end of the show that Will Will and Grease. Will and Grace? Grease. Oh, okay. Will and (laughs) Grease will tell you that while Jack Daniels is more more universally known, it is definitely not the best of the best. Okay. There is your bourbon talk for the day. Wow. The more so, you know, the more you know. Anyway, um, so I, I guess the next way to transition is uh, Virgil asks a question. I don't know. All right. What is your dad's question of the week, Adam? Here we go. What is your favorite family vacation destination? Be it beaches. Disney theme parks, mountains, historical locations, foreign locations. Just what is your favorite um, vacation destination? Virgil, do, do you really have to ask? Because the, the actual answer, as we all know, is my favorite destination with my family is Disney World. But I actually have a, a historic thing. Because I actually like going to all these history places. I mean, I, I like going up to Nashville and see the, the Battle of Franklin and all the the Nashville, the the there is a historic Battle of Franklin. In fact, it's called the um, one of the the worst losses for the South happened at the Battle of Franklin. In fact, I had this conversation with the uh, Logan Seculo Logan Seculo reprogram this morning. 
with Will Haynes. Did you, did you like my, my plug there? I did. Um, uh, Will said that the Battle of Nashville and Franklin doesn't really matter uh, because it, nothing happened. Well, au contraire, my friend, the, the whole point of the Nashville and Franklin campaign was to try to, to put chinks in the armor of the, the Sherman supply chain. So if, if the South had succeeded in what they were planning on doing, Sherman would have never been able to burn down Atlanta. So if you take my butterfly effect game and, and the South had, had really succeeded in, in pulling those chinks out of, out of the armor, Sherman wouldn't be able to burn Atlanta. He wouldn't have been able to give Atlanta to Lincoln as a Christmas present. The tide would have turned for the South. Mm. So was Nashville big in the grand scheme of things, the way history writes itself? Probably not. Yeah. It was one of the bloodiest battles. Uh, I think I read somewhere this morning where they lost to uh, death 14 generals and 55 high-ranking officials in the Battle of Franklin. But if the South had won Nashville and Franklin – it, Sherman would not have been able to make his march. There you go. So there you go. But right. anyway, <clears throat> what I'm saying is I love, I love history. I love going to all these, these civil war battlefields. Well, my wife's one of my wife's good friends from college lives in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And we went and saw her. Eh, it's been about six, seven years ago was before Ellie was born and uh, stayed with her. And, and of course me being the history buff, I am, had to go drive through all the, the historic battlefields of Fredericksburg. I mean, that's where one of the biggest battles was fought. Yeah. You, you see where the South you know, made the, the barges to cross the, the river there and get over into the city of Fredericksburg. Um, we're driving through all these. It, it's basically a, a, a forest. And it was really cool because to me, I know the trees and the stumps and stuff were different then, but to me, the ground that I'm looking at was the ground 120 years ago that was being crawled on by yeah. my forefathers, your forefathers, you know, people that were fighting for their state's rights or, or their country. We get about two miles into it, and Amanda looks at me and says, there's a tree. There's another tree. I'm bored. Can we turn around? There's nothing in her face. She's like, this is okay. Mm. You're looking at a forest. Yeah. She's standing on, on sacred ground for history. I mean, General Stonewall J Jackson stood there. Yeah. General Lee stood there. <laughs> Ulysses S. Grant stood there. Come on. Come on, Grant man. And there, Grant was more in Mississippi, but you get my point. Yeah. So I, I don't understand how somebody can can stand on a battlefield of the Civil War and a not be overtaken by emotion because of all the the travesty and the the needless fighting that went on there. Um, but also say it's boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there Vicksburg is a lot like that. They have a lot of monuments to different regiments and stuff. And you drive through where the battle of Vicksburg happened. And yeah. then they've actually got a recreation of one of the, um, the boats, one of the vessels that they would use. Really? You walk on that stuff down there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's actually on the Mississippi. It's like out on the dock and you walk on it. It's really neat. Um, that's cool. My favorite. So there's staycation and there's vacation, right? I mean, staycation, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do the same, the same two trips every year right now. Cause you know, while Emma, <laughs> while, while Emma's been growing up um, <laughs> and becoming not a toddler, that's enough out of you. And uh, while um, Emma has been becoming not a toddler over the last couple of years, we kind of settled into a rhythm where spring break is Camp Cabana Bay up at universal. And then the summer trip is out to Indian place over in blank, blank. And, um, I, and I think you go to the shores of, uh, of Daytona that, beach. No, not Daytona Beach. No, the other side. Um, and so I would say probably the beach is our go to right now. Um, but Oak Mountain up in Alabama at the state park up in Alabama holds a special place, too. And we're going to yep. make our way up there to um, 
to take the family. Right now, the preference is beach. As the kids grow older, that preference will probably shift. But that's where well, we are. I mean, you need to have a, a, a destination to come to Huntsville. But, yeah. you know. So I mean, Huntsville so in itself is a destination. I it mean, is. I mean, do you, you can do go you to want the Space to Rocket it? Center? You can go to the Space and Rocket Center. Um, there's the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. And then I think really? there's also a Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. Are, are from, what really I hear too, from what I hear, too, there's a tree and another tree and a tree. Like Fredericksburg. Okay. There is also the place where the state of Alabama constitution was signed. Uh, there is a lot of very historic places in Alabama. And yeah, that's deep Huntsville. cut history, man. You're, you're, that's deep cut history. <laughs> you can also see the stadium where Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, uh, Walt Weiss played, uh, all these great Oakland A's from the 90s. Mm. You can see where they played, man. That So if you want to come to Huntsville, I can show you some sports history where so some can, of the greats from baseball played. Oh, some of the greats and some of the great cheaters. No, hey, you you posted the picture on Facebook and asked the question. Not I did. Me. So here we go. Are we are we going to do this now? We're we're, we're I, hey man, I'm primed. Okay. Hey, also before we get there, you can also come see the the uh, your Los Angeles Angel, Los Angeles of Anaheim Angels. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Yeah, okay. You can come see their double A team now. Yeah. And, and maybe when Mike Trout gets hurt, you know, he, <laughs> he will do his uh, yeah, that's like a hunt for. So, sure. you know. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, so Adam, what is your disdain for Mark McGuire? Well, let's let's set the question first. Let's give a little bit of background. So okay. we you you mentioned it in the live, but I don't think we mentioned it here. So you sent me a text earlier today. So this morning. A, Mark McGuire jersey for what? 50 bucks? 50 bucks. And it was, was the it, old Oakland A's jersey. Was it game used? No. Okay. It was, and, just, it was just an authentic Mark McGuire jersey. Okay. And you said, should I? Mm -hmm. And I said, he's a cheater. No. Very straightforward answer. And then you proceeded then to post a picture on Facebook of Mark McGuire. And was it the day he hit the record breaking? It, was, it was 70. And his son ran out. And he lifted him up and the whole team's there. And you said, what does this image convey to you? Mm -hmm. And the response was fairly divided between, it seemed, two camps, one more prevalent than the other of he's a cheater. And the other one was this was baseball at a time when they needed him. And I think that's what my dad also said on the live feed is he mm -hmm. saved baseball, basically. Him and Sammy Sosa saved baseball. Yeah. So um, I think uh, what that picture conveys to me if I can answer the question. Actually, go ahead, sir. what does it convey to you? I don't think you ever answered it. Well, I'm going to wait. Let's go ahead. Okay. What does it convey to you? To me, it conveys to me a father looking at his son saying, do whatever it takes to succeed, no matter what. Even if it's not against the rules and just pushes them so that they bend but don't break, do whatever it takes to succeed in life, young man. That's what, what I supplement. Think. What supplement was Mark McGuire taking in 1998, 1997, 1996? Um, Adrena something, wasn't it? Androstein. Mm -hmm. It was banned by the NFL and the Olympic Committee. In what year? Uh, I don't know, but the fact that eventually it was banned, it's not like Androstein. It's not like Androstein changed over the years to where they came out with like version 3.0, now with more testosterone, and all of a sudden it was something that shouldn't be used. It was so I'm it was all of those years. I'm looking it up right now. In October of 2004, President Bush signed into law the Anabolic Steroid Control Act, which added Andro to the list of, ba of banned non-prescription steroid-based drugs. Yep. Major League Baseball, the NFL, the Olympics, such and such and such, in that year, banned it. Mm -hmm. So in 1996, 1997, when Mark McGuire was hitting home runs and doing his thing, Andro was on the shelf of any GNC you walk into. It was illegal, very legal. So for you to tell me that Mark yeah. McGuire was on, ste on ahead, steroids, yeah. mm -hmm. illegal steroids, mm -hmm. Mark McGuire was taking a substance that mm -hmm. was like creatine. 
but was yeah, banned everybody at the time. What year did he hit? In two thousand four. What year did he hit that home run? Nineteen ninety eight. Two years after the NFL banned it. It wasn't banned by Major League Baseball then. It wasn't banned by the country then. Okay, so that's like saying that in the year 1957, I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. That made it okay. The Surgeon General hadn't yet said that it's bad for your health. And we didn't know the time. Yeah, but dude. We didn't know the time. You can look at this and tell that there is obviously something that he is getting from it that's giving him a benefit. Him and Sammy Sosa alone. Not from a South baseball back from the no. brink of destruction. Yeah, we said this. Okay, hang on. Let me finish my point. Those two alone weighed more than the rest of the rosters. Okay, it was obvious they were doing something. And two guys, if it took that to save baseball, there's something really wrong there. We said the same thing about the Houston Astros when they all of a sudden started winning like that. Oh my gosh, look at that. A mid-major market team is coming out winning the World Series. It shows that you don't have to have unlimited money like the Yankees to win. They were cheating. They were cheating. And what they were doing wasn't technically banned by the Major League Baseball. There yes, wasn't it a was. rule. It, it was illicitly no banned. There's no rule that says you can't use the camera to look at the thing and bang on a trash can. There's no rule that says you can't do that. So now we have to write a rule that says you can't specifically do that. But as long as they do it and there's no rule, it's okay. That's basically so, the precedent we're setting now. To hit a ball with a stick. Does steroids help you do that? Yeah. No, no, not to, not no to, it does not. not let not, me finish no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let you talk. I'm not going to let you talk. This is not the, Can democratic, Can this is not the democratic debate. It does no, not help you hit up. the ball. I'm my hand up. It does not help you hit the ball, but it will help you hit that ball a heck of a lot further. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, you are correct. But it will help you hit the ball the heck of a lot further. But it does not help you with your vision. It does not help you see ball, hit ball. NFL, if a roided up man hits a small wide receiver, yes, you can kill a man doing it that way. But if a roided up man hits a baseball, it'll go you know, 550 feet. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And it gives them an unfair advantage against other players who choose to follow the spirit of the rules and not take oh, things. Oh, 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 oh. So it's an unwritten rule that you have already said is a bad thing in baseball. <laughs> so it was in 1998, it was an unwritten rule that you can't take Andrew. It was a substance. That, it was a substance that other sporting associations had already said this is obviously something you should not take. The Olympic Committee had banned it. If I run a lot faster, what testosterone does is it gives your fast twitch muscles like speed and your fast twitch muscles are what you need in baseball to be able to get the head of the bat around to be able are to hit that ball me? a lot easier. That Mark McGuire is faster. Oh, for goodness sake. You're just being silly now, man. You're just, you're just twisting things now to be funny. No, what I'm saying is, is that in his arms, which you use to swing a bat to hit a ball, if a 99 mile per hour fastball is coming your way, and A, I have bigger muscles, which means I can swing the bat harder. And B, my fast twitch muscles are now primed with a testosterone, which means I can get the head of the bat around faster. I'm going to hit a fastball most men are not going to be able to. And when I make contact, it's going to go a lot further. I can even then for slower pitches, because I have more strength, where I don't need the fast twitch muscles to get the head of the bat around, I can use that extra strength to make off-speed pitches go a lot further, which a normal player may not be able to carry out of the park. So you hit 70 home runs, but you were obviously taking something that other players opted not to, and other sporting organizations had banned. If we, if we found that Usain Bolt had been taking the same thing because his legs were a lot faster and he ran a lot faster, would you sit here and say, well, he can't kill a man, so what's the difference if he takes it or not? No. it's it's Was it legal? Was it, was it legal and banned? by his association. I, I, I answer I my question. With, I, I'm not debating that Major League Baseball didn't ban it. I'm not debating that at all. I'm just saying that for the sake of the, the, the spectacle, something happened that should not have been allowed to happen. For the sake of the spectacle and the sake of the notoriety and all of the cameras and the press and look, baseball is saved again. It didn't save baseball. Baseball is exactly the same game. You can't tell me that the only reason that baseball is as popular as it is today is because something happened 20 years ago between two guys. And back in 1998, baseball was on its last leg. So baseball would not ex Major League Baseball would not exist today if it weren't for that race, that home run race. 
I am not saying that. I'm saying that it wouldn't exist as we know it today. Okay. So, so when you're, when you're driving down the road and you've got your app open for your discount mm -hmm. and you're going 90 miles an hour down the road, going 90 miles an hour to the city of the sure. when you're going 90 miles an hour down the road, and yes, technically it's something you shouldn't do. It's technically illegal but you're trying to get somewhere faster. That's the, that's what he was teaching his son. When you ask the question of what that picture conveys, it's me telling my son that, you know, when you're bending the rules and you know, when you're breaking the rules, bend them, but don't break them and you will succeed in life. Even if it's something, you know, you shouldn't do. I don't even care enough about you as my son to keep my health at top notch. I'm taking something that might be doing something to my heart that I don't even know because people are banning this stuff for a reason. But he did, it's okay for 19, me because look at daddy. Daddy's successful, so it's okay for me to do it. In 1998, and, we didn't know much about Android's thing. And then why were people I, banning it? Because it was making them bigger and stronger. So you and knew exactly broke. what it did. You knew exactly what it did. No, no, no. We didn't know the long-term effects of it. In that, like I said, football, big, strong man. Hit small, little, wide receiver. Yeah. Big, baseball, strong man. In Kill baseball, man. And you know how passionate I am about this in baseball. Big, strong man hit foul ball, goes in stands and kills little boy. I mean, there's well, the a safety aspect for the fans in this, too. Right. We also didn't have cell phones at the time and people were paying attention to the game back then. So we also have things that, oh, he's he's getting fat mad now. He's 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 sitting up in his seat. We people were paying attention to ball games at the time. Five year olds are paying just as much attention to baseball. Yes. They were, no, come on, dude. Yes. <sighs> Daddy, I'm going to watch YouTube on your phone. That so wasn't happening. This. So let me ask you this then. If baseball wasn't impacted by short attention spans and devices, why was it on its last leg? Because of the 1994 last... strike. Because of the strike. Oh, come on. Because people – oh, come on. You got. You cannot tell me that 1994 did not diminish your thought of baseball because it diminished mine. I was 14 years old. I didn't think about it that way. I was 13 and I thought about it. You guys run out and they play a sport. Why do we care if they go on strike or not? You have a players union. You know, eventually it's going to happen. Okay. I didn't know that in 1994. 1994, <laughs> it was still real to me, Dad Uh It was still baseball. It was, it was for the love of the game to me. I mean, we had the, the Expos who had their shot to win the, the World Series and then they got screwed and now they become the Nationals and they're a thorn in the, the brave side. If it wasn't for 1994, the Expos would still be in, in Montreal. I promise you. Hmm. There's my butterfly effect theory again. Exactly. So, I, think, I think ultimately my issue with it, dude, is that one of the one of the joys of baseball is there's not many sports where you get a one on one interaction of two people staring each other down and then a play happens. It's usually a team and a team in football. It's 11 on 11. In basketball, they're in constant motion. If you think about just the big three, hockey, they're all in constant motion. Soccer, all in constant motion. In baseball, everybody is sitting watching a one-on-one -on -one interaction between two men standing on the diamond, one trying to get the ball past the other, the other one trying to knock the crap out of it. And knowing that one of those men was standing up there and walking to the plate saying, I'm doing something that other people are saying I should not do just for the sake of the notoriety and the record and doing whatever it takes to succeed. I have an advantage over you. It's not, it's not an even ball game at that point. It's just, it's not pure man. And you can't tell me that you enjoy watching somebody who has a distinct advantage because of an unnatural substance that they're putting in their body makes that one-on-one -on -one interaction between pitcher and batter feel pure to you and makes you feel joy for baseball. If it's legal, if anybody could have taken it, then to me, do it. So betting on legal is betting on baseball illegal. Betting on your own team, yes, it is. Okay, but you think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame, don't you? After he passes away, I believe he should. So posthumously, yes, a guy who actually broke the rules, who should have an asterisk by his name. So yes. everybody should just be allowed in, whether you actually it, did something you knew was wrong and was against the rules or not. There's no standard then. He has one of the unbreakable records in baseball. No one will ever match his hit total. With no steroids. And you're, you're going to bring up the other record that's broken, aren't you? And just and go, here's ahead and where, go ahead and, and say here's it. Where I, and here's where I become a hypocrite. Go ahead and say it. Because Barry Bonds was on anabolic steroids, and Hank Aaron is the home run king. 
Yeah. But it's his, but he was doing it when it was okay. No, no. He was on illegal steroids. When, when was he was that? doing it, it was the late 2000s. That's right. Yeah. Okay. It was illegal in, in the country. It was illegal in baseball when he was doing it. Okay. So, so, so he, you're, so when you, when you look at um, ethics and, and, and things like that, when you look at that, then as long as there's not a written rule, anything goes. Once you write the all. rule, it's done. You can't do it anymore. But as long so as what there's you're an unwritten me, rule. So what you're telling me is unwritten rules in baseball are correct, and there no, should I be think, a lot of them. I think there's one thing to have an unwritten rule about. It's kind of like in Hamilton, and, and, and Blair's going to laugh because I was saying, like, we always talk about Hamilton. I was griping about that earlier. But it's like in Hamilton. We always we, talk about Hamilton? or when him, Yeah, right. What, when everybody does. You just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Oh, wow. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. <laughs> I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Nice. So, all right, I even forgot where we were. Where we were. What? <laughs> no, it's like, it's just like when it's just like when um when uh Aaron Burr and and uh, Hamilton are talking before the first duel with John Lawrence and and um, General Lee, and he's like, can we agree that duels are stupid and immature? Sure, you know, and it's it's like so now, as long as there's no rule, it might be stupid and immature, but it's gonna let's just do it anyway. There's no rule. So I mean, let's, let's roll with it. Why not? Okay. So let's go back through and look at other people. I still, uh, sorry, I still just go back to you're a baseball purist. And it's one thing to have an unwritten rule for like, well, if you throw at my guy, then the next game, I'm going to throw at your guy. You might hit the dude in the head and kill him. Okay. That's a stupid, unwritten. that's a stupid thing to have that kind of interaction. Yes. That kind of unwritten rule is just ridiculous. That, that, that's a bunch of guys just being guys. And it, it serves no point in baseball. This is an unwritten rule that says I haven't specifically banned this substance that obviously gives you advantage over the other nine men on the field. But because I haven't done a rule, just go ahead and do it anyway. It's just selfish. Ooh. It's just selfish. So I think I think that to say that, oh, don't you think that unwritten rules are are bad? And then it, there's to me, there's it, it really just apples and oranges. You can't compare the two. So anyway, no, you're, 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 you're looking up. I'm looking up something. So you're telling me that Androstein is bad, right? And it was back in the 90s, right? I don't know that they've significantly changed the chemical makeup of Androstein over the last 20 years. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, not like Bob Chapek. I don't have a microbiology degree though. Hmm, Bob Chapek. I didn't know he had a microbiology degree. He does. And he's now the CEO of Disney. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Chase your dreams. Do you, yeah, do you remember a drink that I used to drink all the time in college called Sobe Power? Yeah. Do you know what was one of the main ingredients of Sobe Power? No. Androstein. Okay. So a drink that is sold by PepsiCo, Pepsi, PepsiCo, mm-hmm. Kyle, a, a drink that is sold by Pepsi had Andro in it. Okay. That makes it Should okay. I have... Should I have not drank Sobe? You go down to the liquor store and buy bourbon, which if you drink too much would destroy your liver. I mean, that doesn't mean you should go do it. Just because something's available doesn't mean it's right. I can start railing on caffeine next if you want me to. Oh, please do. I know you're <laughs> I know you're anti-caffeine, but that'll never that will never change my thoughts. So so you're saying that just because something is available and there's no specific law against it. It should be okay for just, use in any. Was that a gust of wind again? No, that was the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but I, I think this is going to be one of those where you and I will agree to disagree. Absolutely, and I'll vehemently disagree, but still agree that you know we're not going to agree on it. So right. Yeah. So let's let's read some comments from from people on Facebook. Uh, Carrie says Carrie said it should have an asterisk. Carrie Loney, um, Kyle Roberson post, posted a nice meme of yes. somebody <laughs> injecting. I don't know where in the world he found that, man. Oh, I my God. Either. 
Porter made a good point. He said, as a kid, it takes me back to an unforgettable summer of McGuire and Sosa chasing Roger Maris. As an adult, it's unfor- unforgivable or it's an unforgivable summer of two players who didn't have the integrity to play by the same rules as everyone else. Yep. Um, so I agree to disagree. On and that. I, I would disagree that they weren't playing by the same rules because to your point, there wasn't no a rule against it. I would say that they played to a different standard. They yeah, were willing. They were that. willing to do something nobody else wanted to do, and it gave them an unfair advantage. But anyway, yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have to point this out. I tried to get Turbo Eric Terry to call and say this on on the birth line. He didn't. Turbo, I'm disappointed in you. Uh, he said, "Let them all take steroids in all sports. Don't we pay and watch for our own entertainment? <laughs> Don't they get paid millions to put on a show?" How far are we really away from ancient Rome? We just have modern medicine now. Okay. Are so, you no, not entertained? You say that's his Maximus moment. <laughs> yes. So to you're, not, dra- you're not dragging me. You're not dragging me down that topic, man. If you want to know that topic, you're egging me on. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> ask Adam personally, uh, my friend, my buddy, Jay Gilbert, one of the Diz dads said, Mark McGuire is another player that cheated to beat the game itself. He should never see the Hall of Fame either. Yep. Strongly disagree with you, Jay. I also strongly disagree with your choice of Penn State as a football team. Uh, but And he's a Phillies fan, too. Yeah, that doesn't help his credibility much, but I agree with his no. point. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So yeah. you're anti-Pete Rose Hall of Fame, right? Not necessarily. I think that I, I think we have to figure out exactly what we're going to re- what we're going to reward and what we're not going okay. to. If we're going to say people that did things that were against the best interest of the game, whether or not they were illegal, we're going to have to be consistent with that. Mm-hmm. I, I think Pete Rose did a great thing on the field and he made bad decisions off the field. And I think that that'll cost him the Hall of Fame, unfortunately. Okay. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him in there, but I, I know that he did break a full blown Rule, but I think there's a way to honor what he did without like fully making him an inductee. You know, what about Mac Sosa, Palmetto, or Palmero, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens? I, I honestly think what what they did is worse for the sport than what Pete Rose did, because Pete Rose did not throw a ball game. He did not do anything to affect the outcome that we know and, of. Well, that we know of, but I, this, uh, you can't look at it and obviously say, wow, he did really bad right there, and it ended up costing him the game that he made money on. But you can't look at these dudes and be like, holy cow, they're the size of a Mack truck. Hmm, Mac. I mean, you know, <laughs> so I I, uh, I don't know. It's it's complicated. Okay. I say let them in. Let them in, but then we, if, care, if you want to, put an asterisk by their name. But then I think you're just going to find another Andro. You're just going to find another one and another one and another one, and no one's ever going to stop. And they're going to be like, what, shouldn't you let the Astros in then? Shouldn't Altuve be in? Altuve's not a Hall of Fame candidate anyway. Hmm. When you hit 143 on the road, that is you're not a Hall of Famer. That is, that is a very good point. So we got into sp- sideline warning topics without really meaning to. That's a passionate topic, man. It's it is. interesting it is. to us. It's interesting we, to us. We dusted off a 20 year old argument, and I think we have passionately been on. I don't think, as long as we've known each other, I think we've each been on the same side that we're on. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, Mac will be the guy that brought baseball back. To you, Mac is the guy that cheated baseball. Yeah. I, I think that it would have been just fine without him, but mm-hmm. I understand your point too. Yeah. So there you go. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of the show. Uh, aren't we forgetting something? Are we? Weren't you, wasn't there something else you were going to talk about? Was it me or you? I talked about Patreon. You're right. So I, I guess we got a contest we got to let people know about. Yeah, we do. We talked about this on uh, on the, the, the live feed. Uh, every week we do it. We're going to do a 15 minute live before we go and record the show in our podcast studios. I am in the the unrelated to birth studio, which in about eight weeks will be under construction. The birthing suite. 
No, that's that, nope. that will never stick. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we talked about the new contest, and that is thusly. So everybody that listens to this show, yes, it works, Adam. Don't don't. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Keep going. Yeah, everybody within the sound of my voice. If you can hear these these golden dulcet tones, hmm. I need you to click that share button on Facebook that that shows the description of this show and share it on your Facebook page. And when you share it, tag three of your friends that don't listen to the show that, that you think might get a kick out of the show. Do they listen to Rick and Bubba in the morning? Do they listen to buddy shows? I, I don't know. I mean, do they listen to podcasts? Do they they listen might to not. We, we appeal they, to everybody. Are they Bama fans? Are they baseball fans? Are they Disney fans? Are they Universal fans? Are they Funko Pop fans? Are do they, they new musical musical Funko Pop? Numismat- oh, see. We got to have a whole show on that soon. Are they wrestling fans? I mean, do they do they like Halloween Horror Nights? I know a bunch of people that don't listen to the show. Yeah, they listen to the show. I know a bunch of people that that like everything like you do. So what I want you to do, I want you to tag three friends that you don't think listen to the show that you think would enjoy this show. And in doing so, you will enter yourself into a contest, a contest, a contest. You say, what are we giving away? Adam, we are giving away a t-shirt from Dalester.com. D A L E S T E R.com. You got to be a hype man. You got to learn how to be a hype man. Dalester.com. Is that better? <laughs> Dalester.com, man. You get a free t shirt from Dalester.com. And it's not just one of those, those cardboard cookie cutter t shirts that, that you get from, from a, a company that I'm not going to say the name of. Okay. Spreadshirt, but oh they, man! <laughs> so I'm actually they, on their website now. They have a Baby Yoda shirt. They have all kinds of Star Wars, Disney stuff for ish. kids. Disney ish, yeah. Um, just about anything you would be interested in. I think they have a shirt for it. And Adam Dale, who runs Dalester.com, friend of the show, yep, is is we are working with Adam, the unrelated at birth shop will no longer be on Spreadshirt here shortly. The unrelated birth shop will be on dalester.com. Yep. Cheaper prices, better quality shirts. Better designs too, because he, he's good at what he does. I'll tell you what, man. I'm super excited for the design he sent us on Sunday. Oh, he has, I can't he has, wait. he has a Gulf Shore shirt. I need him to edit that for our uh, preferred location. Okay. Anyway, continue. Anyway, Sorry, I'm trying to be a hype man. I'm selling the product. Ah. I am. So the the shirt that the design that he sent us on Sunday, I am super stoked yep. for for it to show up on the birth shop. Yep. Just just know it it it, it combines two of my loves. Oh, Amanda in this show. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, this show has been more. Funko than you can pop for. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> hey, good one, Dave. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to call into the show and tell us your thoughts about Mark McGuire and why I am right, how can they do so, Adam? They would call 444-333-2195 if they want to talk about no. how you're right. If they want to talk about how I'm right, they would call 650-UAB-SHOW. Spell it out on your keypad. Leave a message after the beep. We will play it on the show and discuss it and bask in the glory of how you agree with me. Well, that's not wrong. And did you know that there's a wrestler whose theme song is Bask in His Glory? For he <laughs> is glorious. Bask in His Glory. His name is Keith Lee. Is he British? No, he's not. Really? I would expect that to be like a British guy's like entry. No, dude. 
Let, let me pull it up. Hold up. I, I got to show you Keith Lee. Keith Lee. You will, you will be shocked at what he looks like. I have the Google machine. Let's see. Keith Lee wrestler. Uh, this is riveting radio. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's, big, a big dude. Black man. he's a big dude. He's about like Mark McGuire size. Yeah, but he doesn't take Andrew. Uh, but anyway, so if you want to get a hold of us on the socials, D Adams 419 is me. Run Tide Run is he. Uh, on the Twitter machine and on Instagram, that's both of us. On the Twitter machine, the show is Not Related Bros. On the Instagram, we are Unrelated at Birth. Find us on Facebook, um, uh, facebook.com backslash Unrelated Birth. Ask to join the Unrelated at Birth listening group. And like we talked about earlier on the show, I don't think we gave up the website, www.patreon.com backslash unrelated at birth. Like we have said, we're not going to beg. We ain't too proud to beg, though, but we're not going to. <laughs> um, five bucks a month, man. If you, if you like what we're doing, come on. It might be fun. Come, um, on. come on now. Do it. Uh, do it uh but guys we say it every week we do love you guys uh it's it's a pleasure to get to do this with you guys every week uh i hope that you will join us with for the 15 minute pre-show pre-show chat easy for me to say um guys we love y'all we'll see y'all next week take them home adam all right we love you guys but not as much as jesus does you guys be kind to each other we'll talk to you next week we'll see you live listen in and don't forget the giveaway go do it share it on the socials we'll see you later guys dear theodosia what to say to you that's the only part of the song that i know <laughs> oh man <laughs> <laughs>